So if you've watched my videos for a while now, then you'd know that my favorite type of video to make by far would be Easter eggs in Pokemon. I've done videos on a bunch of main series games and just as many on the TCG, but what else is there to cover? Well, of course, there's the anime. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a countdown of what I believe are the top 10 Easter eggs in the Pokemon anime. Let's begin! In one episode of the Diamond and Pearl section of the anime, a shot of two girls is shown for a couple of seconds. These girls were likely in this episode in reference to the characters Sakura and Tomoyo from Cardcaptor Sakura. They do look really similar. It's thought that this is most likely a joke on the fact that the hats that these characters wear look really similar to the hat that Wallace wears, as he does appear in this episode too. You probably all know how much I love Pokemon Origins, so it's not really any surprise that an easter egg from there would make it onto the list. Exclusively in the Japanese version, when Red receives his Charmander, he considers giving it the nickname Sepultura, which means grave or burial in Spanish. It might seem like an odd choice, but it's actually a reference to the fact that a Charmander with this nickname appears on a screenshot featured on the back of the box for the Japanese releases of Pokemon Red. In Pokemon Ranger in the Temple of the Sea, there's a part where Team Rocket are talking about treasure. And when James says, diamonds and pearls, Meowth says, let's get through this season first. My, my oh. legs. <sighs> what legs? <sighs> Treasure. Diamonds and pearls. Let's get through this season, boys. <laughs> Which is somewhat breaking the fourth wall, but is also referencing the transition to the diamond and pearl section of the anime, which happened barely even a month or so after the release of this movie. But to me, that's nothing in comparison to the next point. Bingo! My favorite bling! <laughs> Is it gold? Silver? Platinum? Rubies or sapphires? Although diamonds and pearls rock too! It's not quite that black and white. Okay, so this part just made me want to scream. Not only does it reference a ton of the already released Pokemon games, but it directly references what's to come, just like our previous point did. They were cutting it pretty fine with this one though, it turns out that this episode was the second last one of the Diamond and Pearl section of the anime, so they were right at the very end of Sinnoh. Even though the entire animated series is technically a reference to the games, seeing them reference a little bit further does kind of make me smile. In the episode, The Battle of the Badge, we get a look at Giovanni's office. Pretty boring to be honest. But wait, what's that? If you look in the background, then you can see an image that matches Mewtwo's sprite from Pokemon Red and Blue. There have been a couple of times that Pokemon cards have made sneaky appearances in the anime. Strangely enough, only in the Japanese version of the episode Bad to the Bone, it can be seen that James owns a Dark Primeape card. And probably the most obvious would be the appearance of the Ancient Mew card at the end of The Power of One. One thing that I can appreciate about the English dub of the anime is that the titles are hilarious. They have some of the worst, and by that I mean the best, puns I've ever seen. A few of them are plays on certain phrases, replacing the word of a phrase with a similar sounding Pokemon, but there are quite a few titles that are direct references to parts of popular culture. Examples would be the infamous episode Beauty and the Beach, referencing Beauty and the Beast or the episode, Wherefore Art Thou Pokemon? Referencing a well-known line from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. It doesn't end at titles though. Examples of references in episodes would be Zoro mimicking the MGM logo, or the movie shown during Meowth's backstory, That Darn Meowth, being a reference to the 1965 film, That Darn Cat. In this episode, some weird TV show that features a character that looks a little bit like Ash is featured. Wait, I've seen that Clefairy before. Of course, this is a direct reference to the Red of the Pokemon Pocket Monsters manga. Such an obscure part of the Pokemon franchise to reference, but it's still pretty cool. This easter egg takes place in the 105th episode of the X and Y anime, which also happens to be the holy grail for a more shippers, but that's beside the point. <laughs> 
There's this scene where Ash is Pikachu and me and Slurpuff are choosing out accessories. But if you look at the desk behind them, then you can see something pretty interesting. Yup, you got it! That's the same pair of glasses worn by Ash's Squirtle when it was still part of the Squirtle Squad. This is by far the most interesting easter egg that the Pokemon anime has offered us yet, featuring a pair of background characters that have been hidden in the Pokemon movies again and again with no explanation. While undoubtedly there are generic designs that will probably appear in the backgrounds of many episodes, these two characters seem a little bit different. Their designs don't exactly scream generic to me, but let's get to their appearances. They first appeared in the Generation 3 movie Lucario and the Mystery of Mew. Their next appearance was in The Rise of Darkrai, followed by Giratina and the Sky Warrior and Zoroark Master of Illusions. Their appearances in the Generation 5 section of the anime would be the first two black and white movies, followed by Kurum and the Swords of Justice and Genesect and the Legend Awakened. In Generation 6, they made their first ever appearance outside of the movies, being in the 50th episode of the X and Y anime. And their most recent appearance would be in the movie Hooper and the Clash of Ages. But why exactly are these two so important? Well, to be honest, no one really knows. It's baffling why these minor characters would feature in so many Pokemon movies and have slight outfit changes between some of them, which means that their reappearances are clearly intentional. I've even seen some wild speculation stating that the story of Ash Ketchum is one that the mother told her daughter, and so all the events of the Pokemon anime have just been imagined by that little girl. Well, I think that theory may be a little too out there, there's no doubt that these characters do have some significance. We just don't know what yet. However, I do think that they will most likely continue to appear in the Pokemon anime for a long time. Well, that was my list of the top 10 easter eggs in the Pokemon anime. If you want to see more videos about easter eggs, then how about you check out these two? There's my video about easter eggs in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, or my video about easter eggs in the Pokemon trading card game. If you can think of any easter eggs that I missed in this video, then leave it in the comments section below. But for now, that's all for now from me, and I'll see you next time. Bye!